It's not many of you, but uh, once again, good morning, AOI. It is said that uh, we are going to leave today, but uh, even though this is the last song service, so I, but I still hope that everyone will give your best as we sing our song, all right? So before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. We can once again sing before you. I pray that uh, you can prepare hearts for the message. You have been blessing us indeed for the past um, three days. I ask that you can continue to pour your blessing upon us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing This is my Father's
the word of God in his hands. Every human being, wherever his lot in life may be cast, may have such companionship as he will choose. In its pages, he may hold converse with the noblest and best of the human race, and may listen to the voice of the eternal as he speaks with men. As he studies and meditates upon the themes into which the angels desire to look, he may have their companionship. He may follow the steps of the heavenly teacher and listen to his words as when he taught on mountain and plain and sea. He may dwell in this world in the atmosphere of heaven, imparting to earth sorrowing and tempted ones, thoughts of hope and longings for holiness, himself coming closer and still closer into fellowship with the unseen, like him of old who walked with God drawing nearer and nearer the threshold of the eternal world until the portal shall open and he shall enter there. He will find himself no stranger. The voices that will greet him are the voices of the holy ones, voices who unseen will unearth his companions, voices that here he learned to distinguish and to love. He who through the word of God has lived in fellowship with heaven will find himself at home in heaven's companionship. Education, page 127, paragraph 1. All the writer is saying, as you spend time with the word of God, when you get to heaven, it will seem perfectly natural because you have exposed yourself to a heavenly environment by studying the word of God and fellowshipping with the people in the word of God. We all have friends on this earth, physical friends. Do you know you can add to your friends by adding Daniel and Joseph and Mary and Esther? Ye, these can be our friends literally by studying their lives. Ellen White is saying if we do that, heaven will become our natural environment. When we get there, it will seem natural. God is good, and all the time, Psalm 100 verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let me say that again. His truth endureth to all generations. You flip that, and what you have is error will one day come to an end. Along with those who persist in living their lives by error, as long as there has been God, there has been truth. As long as there is God, there is truth. As long as there will be God, there will be truth. But one day, error, false teachings, will come to an end. Along with those who persist in living their lives, in error. How was your morning? Some of you have your luggage. I know you're eager to get on the way to get back to Kuala Lumpur or Penang or wherever you're from. And I'm also eager to get on my way. But my focus is right now. My mind is not in Michigan. It is right here with you to carry out this task. Our subject for this morning, surprise, surprise. What did I say? But let me ask what seems like a silly question. Is there anyone with us now for the very first time? Anyone? First time? Since Friday. Okay. Where's Jane? Oh, uh, uh, say amen for Jane. Amen. Jane is my cousin. I know you didn't know that. Now you know. God bless your life, Sister Jane. God bless your life endlessly. How many of you are not yet baptized? Can I see your hand? You're not yet baptized. Question for you. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm quite serious. What are you waiting for? I want you to make a decision to be baptized. Make it today. I didn't say I want you baptized today. I said I want you today to make a decision to be baptized. Those of you who raised your hands and said I have not yet been baptized, pray about that. By the end of the message, I will ask you to make that decision. Which one of you has been baptized, but you really didn't know what you were doing? Can I see your hand? 
You didn't know what you were doing. All right, okay, I see a few honest hands. You know what you want to do? Do you know what you're doing now, yes or no? You want to pray for God's guidance and make a decision to be rebaptized. Ellen White writes in Evangelism, page 375, paragraph 2. When the soul is reconverted, let that soul be rebaptized. All right. I won't add any more categories. Before I get into the message, let me make sure my phone is turned off. By the way, forgive me for coming up a little late. I didn't realize I was right after the music. I was standing back there for someone in authority to tell me to come up and speak. So that's why I delayed. Pardon me for that. If you're not using one of these, make sure it's turned off. If you're using it, make sure it's turned down. Favor number two, request number two. While I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Your words. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. Those are the words I want to speak. Favor number three, think. Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. And for putting his words in my mouth, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I want to speak God's words. And I believe you want to hear God's words. If I'm right, say amen. amen. How many of you have been blessed during this weekend conference? Can I see your hand? Keep your hands up. Come. Come. Are you still blessed? Okay. Come, 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 come. Come, pray for the preacher. Preachers need more prayer than you might suspect. What's your name? Shekinah. Oh, Shekinah. Johnson. Johnson. Oh, Johnson. Is that it? Okay, okay, all right. Shekinah, you pray first, and then Dr. Johnson will pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I just want to thank you for this time that you have given us a personal message. At this time, I just pray that may you put your words on uh, Pastor Randy speaks now. And I just pray that may your Holy Spirit be with us and be in us so that we may be able to receive uh, your message uh, with a heart that is open and not with a heart that is hardened. We thank you, Father, and we am answering this prayer for this I pray in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, let me continue to pray for Alvin Randy. May you continue to put your words in his mouth. May the words will convict and rebuke us. And let us see the each part of our life as we see you do it too. And Father, I pray all the soul that here may you send the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to focus and understand the words that you want us to hear today. Thank you for listening to prayer. This is when we pray. Amen. Thank you, thank you. God bless you, my good brother. But God bless you, my lovely sister. Say amen for God's children. Amen. Say it again. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. How many of you love God? Can I see your hand? I won't call you up. It's okay. How many of you love God? Okay. <laughs> ah, you're so terrified of coming up. Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. No, Genesis 2. Genesis 2, we'll read verse 7, then we'll go to 21 to 23. Genesis chapter 2, reading verse 7, then we'll go to 21 to 23. When you found that, say amen. amen. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In that verse, whom did God make? What do you mean by man? Put names on that. What do you mean by man? Who else? No. In that verse, only Adam was made. Now, we go to verse 21. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 
And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Verse 30, uh, 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now observe that God made two adults. He did not make two children. He did not make a boy and a girl. He made a man and a woman. Is that clear? Not because I said so. Do you see that in the Bible? He made a man. Listen to verse uh, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And the wife was a woman in verse 23. I say again, God made a man, an adult male, and an adult female. I'm not discussing relationship. Then God, well, God told them in verse 26 of Genesis 1, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And then he told them, be fruitful and multiply. Now, when Adam and Eve began to be fruitful and multiply, what did they produce? Come on. Children. God could have made eight billion adults. Yes or no? Yes. He made two adults. Everyone else comes into the world how? As a baby. Which has to be raised. Take this out of the way. Everyone, including Christ, comes into this world as a baby that needs to be raised in an environment created by the parents and also the extended family. That baby looks to the adults for what? Starts with an E, then an X. Examples. The child not necessarily consciously, the child is affected by the example of the parents or whomever makes up the, the environment in which the child is growing. The child grows up surrounded by influences and those influences can strengthen or deform that child. What am I trying to say? It is a solemn responsibility for an adult to present the right example to a child. And God arranged for children to grow that way under the influence of examples set by adults and older siblings. We then as adults should be examples to you. If I'm right, say amen. amen. Yes. What's our subject? Surprise, surprise. Go with me to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. It will not be a long message, but I hope it will be pointed. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's read from verse 12. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read with me and keep the title of the message in mind. Surprise, surprise. Read with me. Let no man despise thy youth carefully now but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation in 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 faith in purity stop we you are called upon why do i say you the man to whom or the boy to whom tim paul was writing was a teenager when paul called him into service paul tells a teenager be an example to the adults. Let me ask you this. Here is an adult heathen and a teenage believer. Who should be the example? Taking too long. 
Here is an adult heathen man, 60 years old. Here is a 14-year-old believer who should serve as the example for teenagers. And so the Bible tells youth, surprise, surprise, be an example to adults. Because no one is exempt from reflecting the character of Christ if that person calls himself or herself a Christian. No one is exempt. Be thou an example of the believers. Which believers? Only the teenagers? Every age group. Be an example. Let's look at the list again. In word, how you speak. Set an example for the older members of the church. What's the next word? In conversation, your lifestyle. Set an example for others in the church. In word, in conversation. What's the next word? In charity. Volunteer your time. Give to church causes. Be an example in charity, even though you're 13. Because Christ was an example of mission-mindedness when he told his parents, how is it he sought me? Wished he not that I must be about my father's business? He set an example for them in keeping your eye on the reason why God gave you life. Here's a child as an example to his parents. In word, in conversation, your lifestyle. Let me tell you something. A faithful teenager is more impressive than a faithful old man. Because the teenager impresses teenagers and the older ones. The older ones we only impress are the older ones. The teenager impresses every age group because it is so unusual to see a committed teenager with all the restrictions, uh, restrictions I should say, that modern society has to offer. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity. In, what's the next word? Spirit, your attitude. Wherever you be, you should tend to bring peace, harmony, oneness, Christ-likeness. Your spirit should not be divisive. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith. Do you know the word? So nice in the Bible, the word faith means the doctrine, the teachings. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The doctrines, the teachings of Christ which was preached by the disciples. Be an example of someone who knows how to explain the 2300 prophecy. Be an example of someone who can explain the second coming of Christ. Be an example to others uh, with respect to explaining the state of the dead or the Sabbath or the sanctuary. Be an example. In faith. Be an example. What's the last one? Come on. Come on. What's the last one? Purity. This is what Paul tells this young man. Go to chapter 5 now of 1 Timothy. Our subject. Surprise, surprise. You have it? And by the way, young men, young women, God does not ask you to do something that he does not empower you to do. So don't say, I can't be an example of that. Man, he's 147. God has told you to be an example. First Timothy 5, reading from verse 1, let me pray again. Father in heaven, be with us now as I try to deliver this message. Speak through me, dear God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. The younger men as brethren. The elder women as mothers. The younger as, come on. How? With all purity. Paul is telling a young man, your interaction with the ladies in the church should be distinguished by purity. Not some purity. Come on. All purity. Because those ladies that you're attracted to, they're your sisters. In Christ. 
Yes, you can marry one when the time is right and if it's God's will. But never forget, you're required to interact with them with purity. We have purity in chapter 4. We have purity in chapter 5. Because it is always applicable. What's our subject? You always thought only adults serve as examples to young people. Now you've discovered the Bible tells you be an example to adults. How old was Josiah when he was king? Eight. The Bible says he turned not to the right or to the left. He did what was right. Eight. Daniel, the three Hebrew boys, Bible scholars believe they were teenagers when they were taken to Babylon. How they survived all the vice and the immorality and the debauchery and the excess of Babylon is due to the fact that they had a solid foundation. And they were an example to Nebuchadnezzar. They were an example to the chief of the eunuchs. They were an example, or Daniel was, to Darius, but he was older then. But in Daniel chapter 1, those three Hebrew boys and Daniel were an example to leaders of an empire. And as a result of their example, they were elevated to positions of high responsibility. Teenagers as examples. What's my charge to you, A-O-Y? Have you ever heard of child soldiers? You ever heard of child soldiers? In some countries, rebels recruit young boys to fight. 10, 11, 12. Mm. And they carry machine guns. And they give them drugs so they're out of their minds and then they have them fight. Child soldiers. AOI has, should have, child soldiers. 12-year-olds who can defend the character of Christ. 13-year-olds who can explain the Bible. 14-year-olds who can lead someone to Christ. AOI must have child soldiers, not child mercenary. Remember the other sermon yesterday? Child soldiers who are committed to a cause and they represent a country. What country is that? Oh, mm -hmm. The kingdom of God, not Malaysia. God bless Malaysia, the kingdom of God. And anyone who properly represents the kingdom of God will be a blessing to the earthly nation where he or she is grounded. By the way, the best favor you can do to the earth is to keep your mind in heaven. Let no man despise thy youth. This is a command. Be thou an example. There are no options. To the, belief, to the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That is what God requires of you. You cannot tell God, I'm just 12. Because God will tell you, Christ was 12. You cannot tell God, I was 8. God will say, Josiah was 8. You cannot tell God, I'm 3. Because God will say, read Luke 180 and read Luke 240. Luke 180 says, and the child grew and went strong in spirit. That's John the Baptist. Luke 240 says, and the child grew and went strong in spirit. Same upbringing. Did you get that? No, you didn't. My fault. Luke 180. Go to Luke 180. Quickly. I won't hold you long. Did I say that already? I think I did. I'll try to keep my word. You have Luke chapter 1, verse 80. Yeah. 8 zero. Read it with me if you have my version. What does it say? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Now, who is that? John the Baptist. Now go to chapter 2. Read verse 40. You have that? Read with me. What does it say? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Children. The child grew in 240. The child grew in 180. One was Jesus, one was John the Baptist. They grew similarly. Does God require righteousness of children, yes or no? Why do you hesitate? 
Always speak with confidence even when you're wrong. Does God require righteousness of children? Yes or no? Yes. Whose righteousness? The righteousness of Christ. Ellen White tells us children should be told, explain to them the righteousness of Christ. She said it is God's will that children understand righteousness by faith. Something most adults don't. What's our subject? What's the surprise? Come on. This side, what's the surprise? God requires you, come on, to be an example. Are they right? This side. Are they right? Yes. I have a congregation of uncertain people. <laughs> what will you do? Having heard what you heard, not from me, from the Bible. Having read where God tells you personally, be thou an example of the believer. What change do you have to make? Your priorities may have to change. When it says in conversation, it means all areas of the life. It means conduct, lifestyle. You may have to set an example to the adults by the way you eat. Some adults may become a vegetarian by your influence. Some adults may decide to study the Bible more frequently because of your influence. Some adults may give up alcohol because of your influence. Drop this idea, I am too young. When the angels came to sodomize the angels, the Bible says old and young came. The old to do it, the young to learn. When the woman was stoned, John ate, old and young were there. They left from the eldest to the least. When Christ preached in the wilderness, he got his food from the young boy. There's a lad here which had five loaves and two fishes. He was listening to Jesus. Now we cannot conclude he was the only child. There were children listening to Jesus. And Jesus got the food for the people from a child. My brothers, my sisters, regardless of your age, surprise, surprise. Any human being that God has given life is to be an example to others. But because this is A O Y, let me hammer it into your head again. First uh, Timothy 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That's your task with God's help. Beginning right now. Because probably you were not aware of that before. Now you know. So if you just run around the building, not taking time for anything, the Bible or prayer, anything, you're giving a bad example to the adults who are watching you. I don't want to put handcuffs on you. I just want you to understand, God thinks so highly of you. He has called you to set an example to adults. That's a privilege. Let me talk to the young men first. Young men, I'm talking to you. How many of you will say, Father, having heard what I just heard, help me to be an example in my life. Can I see your hand, young men, young men? Young men. 13 to 19, all to you. And under 13, if you're 20 and 21, I'm not talking to you, young men. Hands down. Young ladies, 19 under. How many of you will say, having heard what I heard, Father, please help me to be an example to anyone of any age who comes into my presence. Can I see your hand? Young ladies only I'm talking to. Help me to be an example. I'm waiting till you raise your hand. Help me to be. That's right. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Hands down. All of those of you who raise your hands, stand with me. I said all those who raise their hands, stand. The rest of you sit. <laughs> I want to be an example. Can I 
Now, come, come right here, come quickly. Fast, that's too slow, come. Come, you raise your hand, come. Mm -hmm. Come a little closer, don't be afraid, I'm your brother. This is very serious. The devil works very effectively through children and youngsters. Come. Now, let me broaden the appeal. Anyone of any age who will say, Father, thank you for this message. Help me to live a life that's an example to others. Can I see your hand? Any age. Ah, stand up with us. A-O-Y. Army of youth. This army of youth must be an example to the adults. Because ultimately, we are all part of the same army. We don't have a youth army, an adult army. We have an army. And one general, what's his name? Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear God, we thank you for the challenge of 1 Timothy 4, verse 12 where Paul tells a teenager who was serious, who had learned the scriptures. As a child, he knew the scriptures. Paul tells this young man, be an example to the believers. That young man is dead. He no longer needs that passage. We need a day, God, in 2023, June the 5th. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, Empower these young men, these young women, and anyone else who rose to his or her feet. Empower us to be examples so that no one will go to hell because of what they saw in us. But let our lives be the reason why some will be admitted to the kingdom. Let no one be lost because of us, dear God, and our lifestyle. Now, Father, Place your hand upon everyone who made this commitment. Grant them a special infilling of your spirit. That they may leave this place with a consciousness that never sleeps. That they are called by you to be an example. Bless them. Use them powerfully. Win others to your kingdom because of them. Provide their needs. Provide their tuition. I particularly refer to the young. Bless their minds as they study and let them commit the education to your glory. Father, bless everyone who made this commitment this morning, I pray. Save us when you come, dear God. We will enter heaven where all ages are admitted who have been faithful. I pray from my heart, in Jesus' name and for his sake, let all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Let's sing a little chorus, God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. One more time. God is so good, God is so good. Family, yes. By yourself, yes. Family worship cannot replace personal worship. During the day, memorization of scripture, recitation of scripture while you're doing what you do. Do your household chores faithfully. That's the way to tell. I said Jesus was as careful as a carpenter as he was about his character. So when he had to make a table, he made it with as much care as he protected his character. I just described part of my day. What is also part of my average day is preparing sermons for the many, many appointments that I have. Time in the gym so I can stay strong to do the Lord's work. And then I spent quite a bit of time ministering to online contacts. All my WhatsApp contacts are my 
personal church. Let me tell you what they don't know. I pray for them every day, several times a day for every single WhatsApp contact that follows me. I pray for them every day, several times. Whenever I see a new follower, I pray for that person. I say, God bless this person. I may never know who the person is, never see him or her until the kingdom comes. I pray that's part of my ministry. I get a lot of questions. I take time to try to answer as biblically as I can, if I can. And that really takes up my time. So when I'm online, I'm not socializing. I am ministering. As I said, that online group, without their knowledge, I regard as my spiritual flock. And I pray for them. Sometimes people write me and they say, I'm struggling. And I say, I'm praying for you right now. And I pray right then. That's my average day. It varies from time to time, but most of it is spiritual activity so that I give the devil as little chance as possible to create a catastrophe. In all you do, in all you do, try to maintain a spiritual mindset. I told you, was it Friday night or Sabbath? When I'm in the gym, if I do a set of bench press, as I rest, I recite a passage when I'm resting. So the mind, because not everyone in the gym is properly dressed. Are you with me? No, you're not. Okay. I recite a passage, mm -hmm. then I do another set. When I'm tired, another passage. I may take Revelation 15, takes 30 seconds to say, say it twice or three times, 90 second rest, then you go back. Whatever else you do, in between sets, I hope you know what a set is, you recite scripture or you pray so that the mind is always where? In heaven. May the Lord bless you as you order your days so that you become a source of light, encouragement, and strength wherever you go. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen and Amen. May God bless AOI as long as it exists. And when he comes, I hope all of us will be together in that new world. Jesus is coming. This is no joke. He is coming. Let's get ready by His grace and His power. God bless you. I love you. Perhaps I'll see you some other time if God leads you to invite me back. That's not a request. I'm simply saying maybe in the future God will lead you to tell me come back. Until then, let's be faithful. God bless you and I love you. Friends, praise God for AOI 2023. Amen? Amen? So this is the end of AOI 2023. But friends, this is not the end for us to continue having that relationship or experience with God. So now before we dismiss, we will spend time in United Prayer. And the focus of this session is um, to give thanks, to give praise to God for what He has done throughout the AOI, in you personally, and as well to each one of us. And also, let's praise God for what He will do after this. So let's claim Bible promises in our prayer, or even sing scripture song that we want to claim but before we start um, i like to read this quote from prayer 104 paragraph one and this give us a reason why we need to give praise and thanksgiving to god it says in here if the loving kindness of god call forth more thanksgiving and praise we would have far more power in prayer. We would abound more and more in the love of God and have more bestowed to praise Him for. So now I'd like to request everyone to arrange the chair and we will gather all here for United Prayer. And while we are arranging the chair, I will give this time 
to Nunuk to share something as well. So I need everyone arrange the chair and let's gather inside. Thank you. Please don't leave yet, right? So I want I would like to encourage everyone to be participate in the prayer, and also there will be something that um, Nuno would like to share to each one of us, and I believe it will be something um, that we will praise God for. Let's gather here. Um, yeah, sorry. Actually, I just need to um, arrange just half of the chairs that we have here. Now let's start gathering in front. Come, everyone. Now I'd like to ask each one of you who were present during last year AOI in Penang. I bet you guys remember that time I had, I was standing and asked one important prayer request. Can you guys remember what is that? 